What if Sergei Korolev had lived? You are asking, what if Korolev, who, aren't you? Well, anyway, Korolev was a pretty important dude. Korolev was born in the Russian Empire in 1906, and as he grew up, developed an interest in space and flying things. Korolev personally monitored all key stages of the Soviet space program and paid meticulous attention to detail once he became in charge of the Soviet rocket program. However, Korolev was arrested by the NKVD on the 22nd of June, 1938, after being accused of deliberately slowing down the work of the research institute, according to other people. Apparently, they didn't like the man. The rocket program was set back for years and fell back behind the rapid progress taking place in Nazi Germany. He lived under constant fear of being executed for the military secrets that he possessed and was deeply affected by his time in the camp, becoming reserved and cautious. Eventually, Korolev was released from the gulags and became an important part of the Soviet space program. Under his reign as chief designer of the Soviet space program, Korolev managed to put a man in space and send the first probes to the moon. The early Soviet space triumphs were managed and steered by Sergei Korolev, the man who built the R-7 rocket that put Sputnik and Yuri Gagarin into orbit. He was warned by his doctors that if he continued to work as intensely as he had, he would not live long. Korolev, however, became convinced that Nikita Khrushchev, the premier of the Soviet Union at the time of his success, was only interested in the space program for its propaganda value and feared that he would cancel it entirely if the Soviets started losing their leadership to the United States. So, he continued to push himself even harder. Korolev croaked at the age of 59 after suffering a heart attack. So now you heard of the great Sergei Korolev. Now, let's posit that the man survived for a few more years. Would he have been able to put a man on the moon? After Korolev's death in 1966, the Soviet space effort lost focus. According to some, the rival schemes sucked resources from each other. Quote, there was a great deal of confusion in the Soviet space program in the late 1960s, and as a result, they didn't have the technology to send a man to the moon, end quote. The reason the Americans were able to send a man to the moon was both the large budget, centralized workforce, more advanced computer technology, and the Saturn V rocket that they had. The Saturn V was basically better than Korolev's N1 rocket, which was the Russian equivalent to the Saturn V in basically every single way. It was bigger, more powerful, and more advanced. According to the engineer Sergei Khrushchev, yeah, this is the son of Nikita Khrushchev, the Russian people had many problems in day-to-day -day life. They were not too concerned about the first man on the moon, and Korolev's problem was his mentality. His intent was to somehow use the launcher he had, the N1 rocket. It was designed in 1958 for a different purpose and with a limited payload of about 70 tons. His philosophy was, let's not work by stages, but let's assemble everything and then try it. And at last it will work. There were several attempts and failures with a series of unmanned Soviet moon probes. So, things are not looking good for the Soviets, even with Korolev living. It seems as he was more of a champ at navigating the highly dangerous Soviet government rather than the actual implementation of the rockets. And besides, even though Korolev was highly brilliant, there was an extremely high level of pressure on him that the Americans simply didn't have on them. If he failed, basically he had a chance that he would be sent back to the gulags or worse. That kind of pressure is not too good when in your field, the next test might go horribly wrong. Now, if Korolev had lived, I'm pretty sure there would have been a good chance that Russian cosmonauts might at least achieve lunar orbit, but there is very little chance that they will have the full capability of a moon landing, unless the Soviets decided to ease up a bit and devote more money to the enterprise. If the Americans were to succeed, which they will of course, I am betting that the Russians in this timeline would continue the space race with Korolev at the helm, given an extra boost in leadership. The spies would likely steal some essential American technology, and with this extra material, Korolev would be more than capable of launching a Russian on the moon, perhaps an year after the American moon landings. In 1970, say, a Soviet cosmonaut lands on the moon. 
Now the space race continues in full fury, with each side aiming to travel to Mars and perhaps even establish a base on the moon. Spiro Agnew, the 39th Vice President of the United States, said that America would land a man on the moon by 1980. This was a realistic scenario to most people at the time, which suggests that in this alternate timeline, one side or the other would get to Mars. I would place my wager on the Americas, however. The main issue is that the Soviet space program did not receive enough funding, and the entire system was not geared towards such an enterprise. Thus, the Soviets would attempt to fight back by establishing lunar bases once the Americas landed on Mars, although these would be very tiny and most likely a place to temporarily inhabit. However, one thing can be said for sure in this timeline. If Korolev had lived, the world would be much different than it is today, with a greater era of space exploration as originally planned by those in the 60s. Thanks for watching and sub for more great content. This is Scholar of the World, signing out.